Did a, narr a book narration, like like a novel Audio book narration yeah. that's coming out soon, and it's really cool. But it has these like weird, like space time jump things, these chasms. <laughs> so that's what I was like, oh yeah, super hard work, but I love it. Audio books. I it was really fun. Yeah. Because like you kind of just read and you get into it in a different way. It was really neat. Yeah, I want to do more. Yeah, it's really cool. Is this going to be a trip over the same word over and over again? Yes. <laughs> Alright, let's take that again. <laughs> my favorite is penguin. You know, Benedict Cumberbatch oh, can't okay. say penguin. Oh. He says, like, penguin and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the tea time, the tea time. So this is the last of our series. Great. Right. Until next season. Until next season. Yeah, right. next season. <laughs> and today we're making cedar tea. Yes. So I, I know we need to simmer it for a little while, so I wanted to just get started on that. Why don't we do that? And okay. uh, I'd love to um, sing a welcome song first. Yes. Okay. Please. Thank you. Great. Um, so just, you know, I, I think that in terms of... Uh, Looking at, well, I've had elders and teachers who talk about the fact that because we are human beings in a physical, we're spirits in a physical form, we are all creative artists. Just by the very nature of being human, we are artists. And in, uh, you know, sort of pre contact, we would sing and dance, and that was part of everything. Expression. So singing and dancing was part of just what you did every day. Mm -hmm. And we also sing to honor and to respect and uh, to speak to the medicines and we sing for prayer. So I wanted to start with a song just to welcome everyone and also welcome the medicine. And uh, so this is called a welcome song. <laughs> Thank you. 
you so much, Danny. We uh, sing those four times through to honor each direction. So each uh, south, east, south, west, north. We bring in the spirits. We ask the spirits to join us. And the spirit of the medicine, the spirit of the cedar. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And here we are. We find ourselves in Labor of Love, the yeah. store um, yes. on uh, Carlton and Parliament in what is now the city of Toronto. The right, the traditional territory, Haudenosaunee, the Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, the neutral nation, the Anishinaabeg, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Um, you know, a meeting place for so many nations and yeah. people. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's a, uh, something I've been thinking a lot about the last few weeks is, uh, I think, what was interesting is that all of us, um, the guests and all of us here come from so many different places and we're at different crossroads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And how we meet each other at those crossroads, um, and which is kind of what this is all about. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. And a little tidbit, so Dundas Street, mm -hmm. which, because Dundas goes like this, right? Yeah. Like it's not a straight road, so that was all built on an old Indian trail. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. That's why it goes... Because <laughs> we'd follow the paths of the trail. Follow the so, land. Yeah, yeah, and follow the, the, the land. The, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And um, they built college. <laughs> <laughs> and blue. And, and young. Yeah. <laughs> Squares over circles is what I call it. Squares over circles. Yeah. Yeah, that's true because so many old cities everywhere are just the, the, the streets twist and wind, and you never know where you're going, and you and, and you get lost and pop up in different places. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to Marrakesh. I think. Oh wow. It's like a rabbit warren of like alleys and. Nice. And um, it sounds really, you know. Fun to get lost. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at that. Getting lost. <laughs> so uh, we have cedar tea today, yes. which is really amazing. Yes. Um, I've got this little little one to hand out, um, and I just wanted to, to describe. This is um, cedar from the cedar tree. Yep. It's not like a a different special, um, you know, like a farmed variety. Or, or like it, it actually is the, the tree itself. Yeah, so the best cedar to, to pick for tea is from either a white cedar tree or a red cedar tree, mm -hmm. which is different than the cedar trees that you buy at the landscaper to right. put in your front yard. Okay. <laughs> so those are more cultivated trees. Okay. These, are, these are, you can tell the difference because um, they have a, they have a, 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 a thicker, Tr trunk mm -hmm. and they have a, a slightly different kind of bark. Okay. Yeah. So the decorative cedar trees aren't aren't they don't really have the same medicinal okay. kind of purpose um, properties. Yeah. And this is dried. Yeah. Uh, and it it looks like as recognizably a cedar as I, I know it, yeah. uh, and it smells a bit piney. Um, the beautiful sort of. Yeah, cedar has such an amazing aroma, like a smell, like it's, uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many things you can do with cedar, like, well, it's, the tea's only one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'll hand this around. You bet. So that people can, uh, and then what we're going to do is simmer it for a little while. Yep. Is that right? So I'm going to um, turn that up. Yep. And just, just pour it in. Yeah, um, let, me, uh, let me sort of, so it depends on how strong you want it. Mm -hmm. um, usually, so when I'm cleaning the cedar, like, should we back up? Yeah. So when you're harvesting it, the best time to harvest cedar is when, in the spring, when the new growths are coming out. Mm. So you can tell the difference between the, the old cedar growth and then the new cedar is green, like really bright green. Mm -hmm. So that new growth has more stronger medicinal purposes okay. to it because it's new growth. Mm -hmm. uh, which isn't to say that the old cedar isn't good as well, it's mm -hmm. just that it has more, yeah, the new growth has more properties in it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you're harvesting, um, sometimes it comes with like berries or, or um, you know, the seeds from the little birds. 
around, um, I call them not sit on my side. <laughs> um, so I just clean all of those off. Okay. And sometimes what I do too is I just take off the um, the bottoms of the branches okay. that we don't, I mean it's not that it's, it's okay to put them in, but mm -hmm. um, that's what I do. So like these, these bits here yeah. that are yeah. the bottom of the, okay. Yeah, so, uh, and you can, when you're harvesting it, you don't have to let it dry. You can pick it right off the tree and, and mm -hmm. plunk it right in the water. These and ones are dried from the supplier. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to put in, because uh, there's too much for here for mm -hmm. this part of water. Don't need to plunk it all in. You don't need to plunk it all in. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, so in this amount of water, which is, I don't know, probably about six or seven cups, um, like a, a couple of maybe three handfuls of, okay. of cedar or, you know, four or five big boughs will mm -hmm. probably be all you would need in here. Okay. Um, so the beautiful thing about cedar is that it's one of four, well, it's one of many, well, there's medicines all over, like, <laughs> it's one of four medicines. Everything the earth gives us is a medicine, right? So. Um, this is just one of many, many, many medicines, but it's one of the four sacred medicines. So we have cedar, sage, tobacco, and uh, sweetgrass. Um, and, but cedar can also be toxic if you have too much of too it. Too much of it. Yeah, which it, is it, why it's... Yeah, right. it's got thujone in it, yeah. which is the same compound that is in um, absinthe. Right. Um, so too much of it is not a good thing, but... Right. In regular use, like a, a cup a, a day or something is not going to do too much. Yeah, so um, usually, you know, the, the elders that I've learned from and the folks that I've talked to, um, like a cup every every two or three days okay. is, is like you don't want to take too much. So what it will do is it will flush out the toxins for sure, hmm. uh, but, uh, but flip it over. Uh, and having too much then also creates a buildup of the, of the, yeah, of the, th of of the, the th things that are not, are not good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, <to> talk about. <laughs> um, so when you're, when you're also making tea, you don't want to put too much in either mm -hmm. because you want to make sure that it's uh, got the medicinal, perp like medicine as mm -hmm. well, but mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to, over, um, you don't want to make it too strong. Too strong, either. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I would say, yeah, like two or three, like three, three handfuls of the of the smaller pieces. Like it's beautifully harvested. This is beautifully harvested. Or if you're getting boughs that are are big, like I put in, if it's like a bough that's sort of this big, I just put in like three or four of those. Sort of like twenty centimeters. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Bit and for the people at home uh, with the tea bags at home, it's the yeah. this today is the green square tea bag. It says February nineteenth on it. Ah, great. That um, might be good. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just steep it for a little while, and then yeah. yeah so we're gonna have that. I can already smell. I don't know if you can smell the. Yeah. Um, so smell. one of the things during COVID as well, like when the el when COVID started going like this, the elders said drink cedar tea mm -hmm. because what it also does is it strengthens it, it's an upper respiratory uh, cleanser as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and they also recommended just putting a pot of cedar on your stove just like this just like this and just like letting it fill the air mm -hmm. so that it so it's like an air cleanser mm -hmm. it's like an air filter cleanser right. you didn't have to buy the machine right. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just put on a pot of cedar and let it fill the, like the aroma fill your house right. and then it, cl it clears and cleanses. And it smells amazing and too. And it smells amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I read somewhere too that um, that they found uh, smudging ceremonies with smoke yep. um, actually does clear like kill bacteria in the air and everything so that there is actual you know wisdom to all these practices as well. Yeah. It, it, it makes me giggle sometimes when the scientists come out and they go, we've just discovered. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'll be this article about, you know, the, the fact that sage actually does, it's an air purifier. And, and so is cedar. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm like, yep, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. If you weren't listening, we were trying to tell you that years ago. But uh, uh, yeah. So I I try not to boil it too much. Like okay. I try to get the the it, it coming to a boil, and then I'll okay. turn it down and try to. Uh, it's more like a simmer, mm -hmm. so that you don't mm -hmm. over um, tax the the medicine inside. Okay. So you're not yeah. extracting too yeah. much of the. Yeah, because then it gets really dark, really. For like it'll like the the hope is that you get it so that it's a nice sort of um, light, light, light amber color. Okay. As opposed to a dark amber color. When, right. When it's too dark, then it's too strong, probably, and it's good to add a little bit of hot water to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The okay. tea bags are different. Like you can steep. Well, I just put it. I just actually put my tea bag in and I. There, which okay. is not recommended, <laughs> but it's just because I actually like the taste of it really strong. Right. But I'm also super careful not to drink too much of yeah. it. So, right. um, but once that sort of comes to a, a bit of a boil, then we should turn that down. Okay, okay. well, it's but starting to simmer now. Yeah. Yeah. The smell is amazing. I know, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I know that we're on the thing of tea, but mm -hmm. cedar is also, so we talk about it as, so, oh, I've got so many things in my mind. <laughs> oh, I've got five <laughs> things in my mind at the same time, and I have to figure out where to start. Um, so a lot of these teachings I've been given by, um, by elders that I've spent time with, and because mm -hmm. um, I didn't grow up on reserve, I, I was disconnected with my indigeneity growing up, and so I spent a lot of time uh, some from my early 20s and, and I still do I'm, I'm all I'm still a student and mm -hmm. uh, and so my teachers and my elders also talk about again this being sort of a sacred medicine that so cedar is considered to be a woman's medicine mm -hmm. and um, so you can also just make cedar baths as well you can actually take the boughs and just put it you can just put the boughs in your bath Mm -hmm. And then soak in that, and it'll it'll take the toxins out of your out of your system as well, mm. and it'll just clear and cleanse. So it works not only on a physical level, but also on a spiritual level too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow! So a lot. It's super super powerful medicine. Yeah. yeah, it has many many, and we also burn it when we you know burn it when we light sage and sweet grass and stuff too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the uh, harvesting of the cedar, is there also a ceremony involved with that? Yes, absolutely. That's a good, thank you for the question. <laughs> um, so uh, tobacco, being our other sacred, one of our four sacred medicines, is kind of, so a really bad analogy is that it's a, new, it's a contract. Hmm. Um, right now we have pieces of paper where we sign our names to and we go, we have both agreed to do this, mm -hmm. right? And then, mm -hmm. you know, we have a bunch of people that don't honor those anyway. Um, <laughs> but, um, tobacco is our contract. So when we offer, we, all, we offer tobacco to the plant before we take, we take it or harvest it. Mm -hmm. And our contract with that medicine is, I'm offering you this tobacco and I'm, I'm going to use you in a good way hmm. for a good purpose. So that's my promise to the tobacco that whatever I do with it, I'm going to, I'm going to use it in a good way hmm. and not for something that's not good. Like, yeah, my purposes and my intentions are clear. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk to the medicine, I say, this is my intention. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm offering you this tobacco. And in exchange for that, I would like you to make your medicine strong. So that's our, our contract with each other. Mm -hmm. So I did. A, I spent a lot of time with a, an elder named Sam Ozamak from Wikwamakong in um, Manitoulin Island. And he uh, would pick medicines with him and, and help him pound the medicines. And he always sat. Before he picked anything, he would sit with the medicine or the flower or the tree or the plant or the bark and just talk to it and mm. say, this is what I am using you for. 
And mm. so as a result, show me your medicine. Bring your medicine out and make it strong. So he, I won't name names, but he used to complain about some of the, like the vitamin C things and or medicines that we would buy at the at the pharmacy, mm -hmm. and say that there was actually no medicine in them at all because nobody had bothered to actually talk to the plants. Hmm. So we take all of these vitamins and we take all of these things that actually don't have a lot of medicine in them because. Right because the plant wasn't asked to release its medicine mm -hmm. in the first place. So that's, a, that's really beautiful because yeah, I've been thinking a lot about intentions yeah. and how we how we do something. The intention of doing something can change the the action of it Absolutely. so much. Yeah. And sometimes is it for the effect or is it for the intention yeah. um, that the change in the world is happens. Yeah, and I had a really interesting conversation with, um, sorry, just uh, I should turn this up a little bit, just, yeah. just get, her, get her going a little bit. Um, I had a really interesting conversation recently with a University of Waterloo student, who, were, and they were talking about our relationship to inanimate objects, mm -hmm. and how, how what, what the idea of care means. Mm -hmm. and, and they asked me a question, um, because my show is about stones, and, mm -hmm. and my, in my play, the stones are alive, right? And she was like, uh, yeah, but how can you care for something that's inanimate? And like, well... But is it inanimate? Is it inanimate? <laughs> and who decided that? Right. And who, de who decided, A, that it was inanimate? But even if it doesn't move, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have, it, that it's not a sentient being. Mm -hmm doesn't mean that it doesn't have a spirit mm -hmm. and it's the spirit we care for and it's the spirit we talk to mm -hmm. so when when I'm talking to the medicine I ask the spirit of the cedar mm -hmm. to bring out its medicinal pr properties right. so that it can be used with this intention of healing or releasing toxins or whatever mm -hmm. yeah that's great. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about your show. Because yeah. you're, you're right in the middle of touring it. Jan, Janny just drove in from North Bay. North Bay, yeah. Well, Nipissing First Nations, yeah. And then you're going out to uh, the West Coast yeah, in a little while. We're going to the Gateway Theater in, in Richmond. Amazing. And then Vernon. And then Whitehorse. Oh, so I'm super excited. So my show is called Prophecy Fog. It's a one woman show that I developed through a residency at the theater center. Uh, it was called the Tracy Wright Global Archive. So Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. <clears throat> and Tracy Wright was a Canadian actor that we lost to cancer. And her belief was that in order for the world to function better, we needed to travel and put our feet on other people's land. And once we did that, we would have a better understanding of them and therefore have a better understanding of ourselves. So the Tracy Wright Global Archive, we were asked to submit an application about where we would want to go in the world and what question we would ask. And that was it. It mm. was like, ooh. <laughs> so I went down to a place called uh, Giant Rock in the Mojave Desert, which is this seven-story high freestanding boulder that has this incredible history and past with a variety of different people from people who believed in UFOs to prospectors to the indigenous nations down in that area. And uh, I worked on the show with Franco Boni, B-O-N-I, uh, who, be, who was my director, and I wove in stories of my mother, my daughter, and also teachings from Sam, and um, a book that my mom had when, she, when I was going through her things when she died. I came across this little tiny book called The Soul, Science, and Star People. So I wove all these stories together, and I travel with about 250 pounds of rocks <laughs> in the back of the van. 
So when we go to Vancouver, we, I, I have to collect rocks from, in from each there. location that we're oh, in. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's such a beautiful yeah. show, though. I, I remember yeah. It, yeah. it was very profound in talking about the soul of, yeah. um, of that rock in particular, that, that the, the huge rock and, yeah. and its story is really beautiful. Just an amazing... I mean, we have sacred stones all over the world, for sure. Um, and so many of them have been desecrated or blown up or, mm. I mean, even coming down from North Bay when you drive that Highway 11, which used to be called a colonization road, by the way. <clears throat> That's another whole history you could do on another day. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you look at those those rocks on the highway, you see where the, they've blown up, the, the yeah. dynamite things, right? Yeah, the yeah. I call them the tattoos or the scars of... Yeah, you know, um, I was just watching a show today about the Yukon and and gold digging oh up yeah. in Yukon, and it was, you know, from a helicopter up above. Wow! And it was it was quite incredible because the, it's such a beautiful landscape yeah. with uh, larch and pine trees, and the rivers, and then these like massive scars yeah. with bulldozers going all over. It was actually quite shocking. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. If we actually really looked at the earth from that perspective, I think we would burst into tears. I, I really do. I mean, it's all over the world, right? If it's not gold digging, it's something else. So many, yeah, so many things that we're literally extracting yeah. from the ground. Or, gee, hmm, the green belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. gold and value of a different sort. It's good, you know, these medicines, like... Like this medicine here is all over. Sorry, I can't find much to do. Like this medicine, the the there's medicine. There's so many beautiful medicines in our front yards. Mm -hmm. um, like plantain, <clears throat> you can find plantain everywhere. It's a fantastic medicine. I mean, most people think it's a weed, right? So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, not the banana plantain. No, not yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, a, it's a a weed. It's a. Like you, it's. It grows between the, on the sidewalk. It grows on the sidewalk. Yeah. It's a fantastic. Like you can put that on burns. You can like it's. Huh. There's medicine every, and those areas that are being. <clears throat> uh, that we're supposed to be protected are, are just full of, of cedar and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and medicines that, mm -hmm. that, we had a relationship with at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading um, William Komanda mm -hmm. um, and his book. Uh, William Komanda was a, an Algonquin elder. Um, what else? Uh, As a knowledge keeper, he was a pipe carrier. Uh, he was gatekeeper of wampum belts um, and uh, started Circle of All Nations, um, which is kind of like an eco. Um, how do you describe it? Yeah. <laughs> trying to eco peace uh, organization, right. not quite an organization, but trying to spread um, that throughout throughout the world, and um, it really profound what he has to say in his in his book about switching that mentality. It's a mentality. Yeah. It's not. It's about being in right relationship with each other mm -hmm. and being in right relationship with nature, as right. opposed to. The assumption of superiority being better than. Yeah. Right? He's got great stories about um, before the National Art Center was built. Oh yeah. He's got great stories about him and his father um, coming up to the bank of the river oh. with their canoes, <laughs> like <laughs> landing right where the NAC is. Right. Yeah, it's pretty. It's well, pretty because amazing. he also has this thing about the island uh, right near there, yeah. um, and wanting to build. Um, a center there for like environmentalism, but also like sharing. Um, Cause that was a big thing for him too. Is like not just like all the peoples of the world yeah. being involved in that, and how how we can engage with that. Yeah, and I don't know the history of that island, but I do remember that it being like a gathering place or a sacred space. Yes, he talks about that. Yeah. Indigenous nations. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I think that's really important about tea, whether it's, and I'm sure that this is, this, I mean, probably talked about this before, but there's something really, really, really important about tea and drinking it together. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, when I would go visit Sam, we would just,
texts. He would, we would make tea, and sometimes he wouldn't even talk. Like he would just make tea, and then we would sit there and we would just be with each other. And the, this whole, the action of drinking, and the and the grandmothers are like when you go visit elders or you go for a teaching or you go for a healing or whatever. They're always like, oh, have some tea. Like that's the first thing you do. <laughs> is you sit down and you have tea. Because, and the and the tea and the tea drinking was part was is part of is part of the learning. Mm-hmm. It's part of the gift of the knowledge that they give you, and and it's the thing that brings brings you together. Mm-hmm. And so it's yeah, it's part of it's it's in so many ways it's part of what ceremony was. Was just sitting down, you know, either around the fire or kitchen table later on or whatever and, and just having tea with the elders and the grandmothers. Sharing sharing space, sharing presence, sharing intention. Yep. But yeah. Really Speak of tea. Yeah. Are we, I hope. think we're pretty good. Okay. It's so hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to check the color? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Because we gotta have the bear paws. We gotta have the. I'm staring at these bear paws. Yeah. Um, I was talking recently to because I was up north in the Pacific for stations during the show, and I was talking with Penny Kuchi about maple syrup, and uh, we were talking about. I'm digressing, but we're talking about the idea of time, right? And how everything again is connected to, like the tree tells you when it's time to harvest. Mm-hmm. And if you're not paying attention and watching the tree and paying attention to the signs that it's giving you, you'll completely miss the harvest. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's it's about that it's about that relationship of really being in right relationship with the tree or mm-hmm. being in right relationship with the cedar tree or you know, because maple syrup is also considered a medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah but- there's tons of health benefits to that yeah. too, a lot of yeah. uh, electrolytes and vitamins. Like incredible, everything. incredible medicine, yeah. And, and the same as honey, but, um, but yeah, it's about, it's about being in right relationship and when you're harvesting the maple syrup to, again, talk to the tree or offer it tobacco and saying, this is my intention, this is what I'm going to use it for, I'm mm. going to use it to heal my body. Yeah. Mm. The other thing I was going to say, because I have Pauline Shirt in my mind, so Pauline Shirt is a Cree elder that uh, she lives in Toronto, and I've, I've had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with Pauline, and she talks about the importance. She's a water keeper. She's a water keeper, a water walker, and uh, and so the water is also a really important component of the tea that we often forget. Mm. So one of the things that she talks about a lot is making sure that when you are using water that you, again, you ask the water, you tell it that you love it, you thank it for its properties. Um, so even when you're making tea, it's not just the the herb mm-hmm. that you use, it's you, you need to talk to the water as well mm-hmm. you know, to say, please, you know, help me clear and cleanse my body. Mm-hmm. So that's whether making tea or just drinking wow. water. So Amazing. before you drink a glass of water, just say thank you, and then it will Amazing. actually respond in di- to your body in a different mm-hmm. way. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me try one more time. I don't want to keep us here till six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks a little stronger. Okay. Cool. Okay, here, then pour it out. Sure I've been drinking cedar tea so much that I, I tend to make it a bit stronger, but then I like, oh, that's not really what I do for everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
like a nice soft uh, almost like a straw color. Yeah. A little more orange, a little darker than the straw. I call it amber, but I'm not amber. sure if that's the right. That's a beautiful hue. That's yeah. Amber is a beautiful hue. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, it smells amazing. Now I don't drink it with any sweetener, but most okay. people who drink it for the first time, because um, it does have a slightly sort of better taste to it, I would highly recommend putting some kind of uh, sweetener on it. Um, so, so we have some honey, and I got this where I got the bear paws. And the owner, I, th I guess, has um, like a farm in Scarborough. So it's pretty local. Nice. It's about as local as it gets. Yeah. Oops. 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 so good. that we've sort of forgotten in our really busy days. So just take a moment before you drink, a moment before you eat, to say thank you. Just a little tiny bit more. Yeah. Uh, so the snack we have today with the cedar tea is from a restaurant called Tea and Bannock over on Gerard and Green, Greenwood. And uh, they're just so, they're so cute. <laughs> uh, basically, they're these fried breads, uh, little fried breads in the shape of little bear paws with uh, cinnamon sugar on them. Um, and they're really quite they're lovely. so tasty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, Richard, would you mind help me move this over? Yeah. And then we can share. You. And we've got, uh, we can have our bear possum here. Great. And then we want to put honey and make a sip on the side. Yeah, yeah. I'll just put, I guess. Is there a spoon that they can. This one, and here's oh, the spoon, okay. and then there's spoons on there. Okay. Yeah. Nice. This is unpasteurized honey, too. Okay. Yeah. Honey done first. This one. There's, yeah, the seal is still on. Oh, right. It's not a special. <laughs> I guess you're any kind of definitely. that I've ever had was in Moose Factory in the, min in the middle of a teepee. And the women there, they make the dough and then they put it on a stick and it looks like a hot dog. Okay. And then they just roast it over the fire like oh. a hot dog. It's so good. Oh, man. Ooh. So it's, it's not really fried, but it's... It's sort of baked over the fire bannock. It's so good. Oh, oh that sounds yeah. really good. Yeah. This one's fried. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fried is also very good. Yeah. <laughs> and so Especially I'm, the sugar and the cinnamon. On top. Yeah. So I'm told these don't have egg in the, in them. Uh, I asked if they were vegan, and they said no. <laughs> so I think there might be some dairy in in the dough or something. There might be. Uh, I don't know what they put in it. Yeah. Secret, secret recipe. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna try this. Mm. It smells amazing. It's good. It could be a bit stronger, but this is nice. Like it's not too. You can you can feel the. Yeah, you can. Like it's not like a strong, strong taste. No. Um, no. But it's subtle. It has like an aftertaste to it almost, right? I can tell. Yeah, I can tell that it's there. Yeah. And it's almost minty. Like there's a, a bit to it that almost. Mm. 
It's quite refreshing. Yeah. Would people ever drink this cold? I do. Yeah? Yeah. I put it in the fridge and then just drink it with ice on a hot day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm getting some almost fruity notes to it, actually. Uh, could mm. be. Um, oh, that's beautiful. And if, like, this cedar out west, like the red cedar trees, mm -hmm. I think it's a different kind of taste than the so, white and the red out here. Okay. Yeah. So in, in like, the Rocky Mountains and the coast? Or? Yeah, the coast, like, some of those old growth cedars are, oh. are, like, the taste is, I had cedar tea um, out in the northern BC about, 10 years ago and it was like what is this like it was just so good it was mm. yeah yeah but it's a different kind of um like it's not a blast of taste like that you would get from earl grey or you know yeah. or, uh, or rose hip or something it's much more subtle and i like it though there's um, a there's still a there's a really beautiful perfume off of it yeah um, very different, uh, very different experience, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. so and it just cleanses your palate. Yes, it cleanses the palate. Yes, exactly. There's a lot of teas, there's pungents, tick over. Yes. It's like, oh, hey, I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Yeah. Regina's saying it's very smooth and, um, not pungent, but there's a, a beautiful smoothness to it. Yeah. And I can feel it too, like when it comes down into the sort of the upper respiratory tract, I can feel that it's sort of opening my my breathing. Oh, yeah. Like my, it just opens things up in a different way than. Um, it's like a natural VIX. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Like a natural mix. Mm -hmm. okay, but I do feel a little in my yeah. sinuses, like that, that yeah. opening you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. but natural. Not petroleum based. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, I think sometimes with our, with our taste buds too, we're used to acquiring, we want something that gives us a sensation instead of something that just awakens us. Mm. So. Yeah, in a in a sense. calming way. Like it's yeah. it's not a Yeah, it's not like a, Yeah, it's not like a energetic. Yeah. It's just it's there. It's not like a tea that has five adjectives to it. <laughs> <laughs> Super hot, extra hot, blah 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 blah. It's just super subtle. But with such a, yeah, it's just medicine, it's medicine, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, I look at it as medicine as mm -hmm. opposed to tea more, more often. Yeah. I that's, have to try one of these. That's very profound because it's, uh, coming from Chinese culture, we have a similar thing where, so, you know, our food is our medicine. Mm -hmm. And so many, you know, everything is, is potentially medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so I like, I like that, uh, yeah, the food, foods heal us. Yep. And they can harm us too if we're not careful with them. So it's uh, yeah, a nice way to engage with with the powers of, of the food. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna mm -hmm. And you know, again, I always turn back to my elders and my teachers. And um, I was having a conversation with Pauline Jarrett again around my piece because I was like, I want to make a theater piece that is a ceremony, which is what Prophecy Fog is. But I was concerned that, because we have to be careful about putting ceremony on the stage because it's, ceremony is powerful. And when you ask the spirits to come, they will show up. <laughs> um, so I was talking to uh, Pauline and I said, yeah, I'm just, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go over protocol or, you know, do something I'm not supposed to do, but I, I just, I want to make, I want to blend theater and ceremony. And she just laughed, and she laughed, and she said, everything we do, Jenny, is ceremony. Every single thing you do, 
every moment of the day is ceremony. And I was like, oh. So looking at drinking tea, mm -hmm. eating, mm -hmm. getting up in the morning, that first step, that first step out of bed is ceremony. Our first breath, Our waking first up. first breath is ceremony. Our, yeah, mm -hmm. everything we do is ceremony. Communicating with other people is ceremonial. Like, mm -hmm. and, I, and it really transformed the way that I looked at my day. It feels like a gift. Yeah. Like every breath, every yep. action is then a gift. Yeah, because then there's something beautiful. And, and again, for me, it comes back to gratitude. I wish I'd learned, I wish I'd clued into this one in my 30s. <laughs> but there is such a beautiful power to being thankful for every single moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And really just that being the focus of every day. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, drinking tea is, because I don't drink coffee anymore. Five years now. Really? I love coffee. <laughs> 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 I went to eating screaming, but it was for health reasons. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I started falling in love with tea. And, and just what tea, it's different than coffee. Yeah. When you drink tea, it's different. It's so different. Than having oh I gotta have another cup of coffee and you, <laughs> but in tea it's like you decide which tea you want and there's so many options and there's coffee and then there's tea you know like <laughs> I, I love it it's like mm, what kind of tea do I want right now in this moment so even part of the decision to what kind of tea I want is part of what does my body feel like yeah what what would be what would be, my body be grateful to have mm -hmm. so it's a whole different relationship. It as is. opposed to coffee. Yeah, drinking. it's yeah. true. We've yeah. got, at my house, we've got coffee, decaf. But then I have like 15 different tea yeah. teas. <laughs> yeah. my, t my tea cupboard is so large. I, I keep so many t I mean, I could not buy tea for the rest of my life and I would still have tea to drink. <laughs> it's that full, right? But I, everywhere I go, I, you know, like, I Labrador tea or there's some kind tea from somewhere that I'll pick up and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so much to explore yeah yeah well thank you so much for so joining us today with our bear paws and cedar tea mm -hmm. your gifts thank you so much thank you it's the gratitude and yeah I'm just so so grateful that thank you're here with us thank you and then I stuff my face <laughs> <with bear paws. laughs> speaking with my mouth full well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Wow. Oh. And our, our last, yeah, until season two. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, <laughs> I'll be in the audience next year. <laughs> season two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah like, mm -hmm.